nine months ago, I replaced my car with a van, which I've been sort of tinkering with and semi-converting since then. Uh, for me, as a filmmaker who has to travel around a little bit, um, I wanted to swap my car for something that I could use as a mobile office and an occasional camper. And I'm gonna show you everything that I've done inside this van. It's a 2018 Transit Customs, it's quite new. I got a newer van because this is replacing my car. I needed something that was gonna be reliable. I didn't need something that was older and was more liable to break down. But since I got it, I've done quite a bit of work to it. And today I'm gonna to give you a little bit of a tour of what I've done to the van so far. But just a couple of caveats before we get started. First of all, this is a work in progress. I'm still kind of working on it. I'll probably never uh, actually finish it. Secondly, this whole system that I've come up with has been completely designed to be able to be removed from the entire van in under 10 10 minutes. I didn't want to get a van, convert it into a camper, and never actually be able to use it for a van to transport things if I need to. So everything can come out. Um, it's not an Instagrammable conversion. Um, so everything's a bit rough and ready. I've done it all myself, but let's go and take a look. Oh, and if you're interested in finding out if I actually regret my choice of buying a van, uh, you should watch my other video that I made while I was here in Donegal, which will probably not be out before this one, but as soon as it is, I'll link it down in the description below. But let's start uh, with a couple of things I did to the outside of the van. First thing was to put on some wind deflectors here, and I put those on because it means you can have the window open about an inch, and people can't really tell the window's open, and it gives you a little bit of extra ventilation during the night. Uh, and I installed two external windows. Yes, I put that on myself. Absolutely terrifying process, cutting a hole in a brand new van. And not only did I do one, I did two. I put this universal one on the other side, and I put a universal one, slightly smaller one, on this side because I didn't want to lose um, you know, an entire panel because I thought I might use it for storage. I slightly regret this window, um, and I might replace this for a full-size one at some point in the future, but this is the very first window I added. I assumed it would give me more than enough light on the inside, just one small window. It did not. <laughs> It did not. And having enough light is probably the biggest issue that I had to solve that I wasn't expecting. So let's take a look inside. Here we go. Okay, so quickly I removed the bulkhead and installed these curtains. Um, I wasn't gonna do that for the longest time because um, I wanted to keep everything nice and safe and secure and the bulkhead just added an extra layer of security and then I looked on the internet and as it turns out if somebody wants to break into your van there's absolutely no stopping them the bulkhead won't work they can if somebody wants to get in they will get in so i removed the bulkhead best thing i did because it totally opens up the space in the back and adds a ton more light uh, i'll leave that door open so quickly i've got some uh, I'll, and i'll come back and everything in detail i've got some boxes here i've got a full length bed here um, I've got a little magnetic curtain here um, and at the back I've got a bike and then I've got this storage unit on here and I've got a few nets and things. So let's go through everything in a little bit more detail and I'll explain a little bit more about my choices. So first of all, um, if you notice a lot of silver in here um, for insulation, um, I haven't finished this yet because I haven't decided how much I want to finish it but I wanted to do basically the minimal amount of insulation that would take the least of my space away. So this is um, acoustic, well, no, not acoustic. This is noise reduction foam and insulation. It's about, I can't remember, like a centimeter thick, something like that. There's like two layers on the roof because most of the heat goes out the roof. You got to insulate the ceiling. I tried sleeping in this van uh, after I got it a night when it was minus like five and I woke up and there was ice on the inside of the ceiling. So yeah, it was kind of the first thing I did. It's not as warm as it could be because you could have an extra, you know, you could have an extra layer on top, but it's what I did to get started. Uh, we'll come to the bed in a second. Let's look at these storage boxes. So built these myself, felt quite pleased with, with myself having made these. This one here, this stuff's great, shock cord for doing doing things like this and keeping stuff in. This is a shoe box where I keep my shoes with a little lid that folds up on top. Um, oh, and dual purpose, dual purpose because in under here, I have this. And this little gas stove sits perfectly in there so I can cook 
On top of that, because that moves, I can bring it out here and cook on it as well. And I can set it outside and cook if I really want it. But yeah, shoe box, cook stand, and general, general box of usefulness. And then I've got another one here, which is for clothes. Again, it's got a lid on the top so it can open up. Um, this one has been made with uh, 12 millimeter plywood. And the reason for that is it's strong enough that I can set one of my cushions on it and it becomes an extra seat. So I effectively have got seating in here for one, two, three, four, eight, five people could sit quite comfortably in the back of this van. And it doesn't stop there. It does not stop there because this was designed to be modular. This is like Russian dolls. Not that the Russians are very popular at the minute, but um, you know, Russian dolls. Well, this will lift up and perfectly fits in there which means if i want this extra space i can take that up set that on there and it won't fall over because it's very very bottom heavy and it's wider in the bottom and instantly that gives me more space more space there okay we'll have a look at um the bed then so um I'll put my <laughs> i'll put that i'll put that there i need to cook on it soon enough I'm having bacon sandwiches this evening looking forward to my bacon sandwiches right Stick that back under there. Okay, so this is the bed. And I'll take all these cushions off and just show you what's what's underneath here. I'll take the blankets off as well. So underneath here we've got an IKEA mattress. This is a it's a narrow mattress. It's only 70 centimeters wide and it's about 10 high, so it's not super, super spongy, but um, it suits me. It suits me perfectly fine. And if we take that off, I'm just, uh, I'll just take it off. I can, I can reassemble it. It's designed to come apart. Here's the bed. Now the bed is three pieces of plywood. That one just sits there. This one folds back like that. And that gives you access to some of the storage underneath. Um, and then in this big box here, I keep things like quilts, blankets, um, and then down in the side here, I've got this space where I can fit thin objects like tripods and walking sticks, and I can get a folding chair down there as well. And if you look, you'll notice that this bed is not actually, doesn't actually go full length. It's kind of held together a little bit by gravity um, and just the whole weight of it because it's based around two uh, plywood sort of uh, stands at each end. So we've got one here, see that? That's a separate piece and then down at the other end, here's another one. And those just sit on the floor of the van and then running the full length of it are these two beams. These are really cheap IKEA bed beams. I think these were 15 quid each, something like that. Um, and you can get them with these brackets. Um, and, and these are adjustable, they slide in and out. So what I did was built these two end pieces, put those brackets on there, put the beams on the length I wanted them, got the top piece made, and then to secure it all in place, I drilled straight through the plywood, straight through the beam, and there's a wing nut under there. So two wing nuts, and that locks that entire thing down, but it means that if I want to remove the bed, I just have to undo two wing nuts, and I can have the bed out of this van in about a minute. So it looks solid, it is solid, but it comes apart really easily. And as you can see underneath, I've got storage, um, and this is open, so this, this can just slide out. I've got a container that I use to keep general, general van things in. And then behind there, I've got a little toilet. That's a little porta potty toilet under there, which uh, is one of my favorite features of the van. I'm not even joking, even though I have upon emptying it for the very first time, didn't act, didn't press the pressure release or the, the splash release valve. And I got splashed in my own face with my own poo, which was disgusting, <laughs> I nearly vomited. Um, and then loads of other space underneath here where I can get bags and you know, various things. Right, I'm gonna put this mattress back on. Now, when I want to use this fan as an office, I originally thought I would have to get like a desk that I could work at and 
But what I realized was you can work perfectly fine if you just have a good sort of comfortable thing that you can prop your back up against. So most of the time I'm working the van, I just work like this. <laughs> Here's the best part. Because this is, attached, this is on the driver's seat, I reach around with one hand and I can adjust. I now have like a recliner because I can just tilt the driver's seat backwards and that's the back here. And I can sit and work like this for hours just with a laptop up on my knee. I totally forgot to mention, but this bed can convert to a double because this lip here, I have a, a board which basically sits on this bed, sits on the edge of that, that's one board. And then this was specifically designed to be the same height as that. This, I moved to here, then I set another board on it and that converts the bed into a double bed. I just have another mattress piece that I need to put along here, which is not as wide as this, it'll come to about there. And then when I'm not using it, it'll prop against the back, to turn that into a really long sofa. Back to the video. I got my little mag magnetic curtain. I don't like this, I'm gonna replace this at some point. Up here, I've got, this is a carbon monoxide alarm because I do use a gas cooker in here and I do not want to get poisoned. So it's quite important to have one of those. These, these are one of the most useful things you can get if you have a van. These are magnets, rubber coated magnets and why they're useful, they're useful for all kinds of things. But if you have something that gets wet, bring it up, bring it out. And you just stick it to the side of the van with a magnet and it'll dry there. But what well, if it's raining outside? How do I dry things? Well, well, glad you asked. If it's raining outside, I have this, which is again made a short cord, my little washing line. I can hang stuff off up and dry it in the van. Um, and one of my design requirements for this was that I could fit a bike in the back. Um, you'll often see a lot of these conversions will come right to the back and you wouldn't have room to fit in there. Same, same with these cabinets, they tend to come to the end. I specifically wanted to be able to fit in a bike with only maybe having to take off the front wheel. And I can fit the mountain bike in with the wheel off. Um, and I can fit my road bike in uh, without taking any wheels off. It just sits in there perfectly. Um, and I've got a little bit of extra storage down here. Down in there, I've got a cool bag. And in that cool bag, I've got a waterproof dry bag full of ice and that kind of works as a fridge. It actually keeps stuff cooled for like 48 hours with one bag of ice. So it's pretty good for a day trip. Um, this cabinet here, this is one of the first bits of furniture I built for the van. It's based on like a, you know, like a trades van's just rack, racking shelves. I just needed something that would have, you know, lots of space to put boxes in that was modular. So if I wanted to change it between sort of how I always keep stuff to, I don't know, say I wanted to clear it out and just have like more and more camera equipment. I could just pick all these boxes out that have got stuff I use for overnights um, and swap it out with the camera stuff. So yeah, it's ugly. Um, oh, actually, I'll talk about what I'm gonna do with it later. Yeah, so on the top, I've got various boxes. This is my sort of travel box. So that's a combination of like medicines, toothbrush, shower gel, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, all that kind of stuff. On this row, I get some extra boxes. This one here, I keep some stuff for running. This one here, I keep stuff. Some, I, you know what? If I'm honest, these boxes just get all mixed up and it drives Louise insane, but I can kind of <laughs> find the stuff I need. Um, for power supply, rather than putting a leisure battery, because if you put in a leisure battery, it's kind of like permanently wired in um, and you have to do actual electronics. And I, I decided to buy a power station instead. This is a Bluity power station. It's a 750 watt amp hour power station, um, which has got enough juice in that to keep me going for two days, charging my laptop, drones, cameras, and everything, which for most of my trips, is enough and then I can sort of, you know, attach and charge everything here. I've got a little bit of extra storage. Down here, I keep my food. And then in here, I keep all my cooking stuff. I keep my water jug. I got my wash bowl, hang my hat on here. And then I've got some of these nettings, which are brilliant for sort of loose -ish stuff. So in here, I keep, in here, I keep the coats that I would need to grab the most. Um, just kind of go in there. And then up here, I keep sort of running related stuff. I really need to tidy these up slightly a bit more. Um, what have I not covered? Lighting, okay, so at night, what do I do for light? Well, I have a couple of things I do for light. Um, I'll wait for those. 
I haven't deactivated the main circuit, which keeps these cargo lights on. These are the ones that came with the van, so I'll wait for those to turn off, which they'll do in a second. Let me just close this curtain. Okay, that's the lights off. So what I did for light is up here, I have little LED strip light, which actually gives off a really nice light. That LED strip light cost me, it was a tenner on Amazon and it's just a self-adhesive strip that goes around. Now it's not actually properly wired into anything, it's attached to this power pack. Um, but that power pack is enough to give me enough light for an entire evening. As you can see, this is actually bright enough um, you know, that it would do in the evening. It's not bright enough I want to work in here. So what I do is if I'm trying to work in the evening, I'll just stick up a, a camping lantern. And that gives me a little bit more light. But last thing then is what I do about heat. Well, um, currently my solutions for heat is I've got this here. This is a 500 watt uh, electric fan here, which I can plug into this. And this fully charged with that electric fan here will give me about 90 minutes of heat. So not good if I'm going away for multiple days, but I'm just going away for one night and I just need heat maybe in the morning before I go. That's great. My current solution for heat, which some of you are going to be horrified, <laughs> is to open the windows and light the stove. Um, if I run that gas stove for about 60 seconds, it really really warms up in here if i didn't seal up the windows it is dangerous because fumes could build up and i could get toxicated which is why i've got the carbon monoxide detector and why if i'm using this the windows are always open one other problem with heating with gas is that it causes a lot of condensation because this gives off a lot of well it, just, it causes a lot more moisture than, than the dry heat you get off um then you get off this uh, but if I'm cooking anyway, usually by the time I've cooked, that's been enough heat. Future things, things that might change. Well, as I said, this is kind of this is kind of fairly temporary. I might panel over the top of this at some point. Um, I'm gonna replace this side piece here with a, you can get a thing called a door store. It's like a plastic panel, fits in there and gives you storage in that, in that side there. Also the same on this side, you can get one that will go in here as well and give me extra storage. That'll then open that up and I can either insulate it or that might actually give me a little shelf in there. So I might do that. All this stuff, this wooden stuff, I'm gonna paint that eventually. I'm gonna paint it green or something. Um, I've left it plain as it is because I like to actually use stuff uh, to figure out if I, if I like it or not um, before, you know, before deciding to like finish it off. And then in the back here, there's a lot of, like there's a lot of empty space. This air here is, you know, that could be storage. So I'm thinking what I want to make is some kind of U-shaped shelving unit that comes across here with like one of those little, a bike, um, bike, bike fork clip on it. So this bike will then sit higher up and then I've got storage in underneath it. Um, is that it? I think that might be it. It's much longer than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. And that is my little tour of the van. Ugh. I'm gonna go back out here. Okay. And that is my little tour of the van. Love to know what you think. And if you've done a conversion on a van, I'd like to get your suggestions about what I could do to improve in there. But yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully you find it interesting. And I'm gonna go because I've got several other videos to make and a lot of bacon to fry. So thanks for watching and bye-bye.